Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar today. My name is Heli Pimentel, and I'm a product manager here at ACD. Today, I'll provide you with a sneak peek into our very exciting new product for the summer. Before we begin, um, I would like to uh, reiterate something that um, Rhonda has to talk about, some housekeeping rules. Uh, please note that the audience will be muted for the duration of the webinar. If you have a question, please use the chat function to the right of the WebEx window. Please address your questions to all panelists. My colleagues will address your questions in real time. At the end of the webinar, if you're available to stay behind for a few more minutes, I'll try to address some of your live questions. In the event we have not addressed your question, we'll follow up with you offline after the webinar. Please note that the webinar is being recorded. So in the event you cannot stay for the whole duration of the webinar, we have the recording up uh, on our website soon. So on the agenda for today, I'll first go over ACD's existing product portfolio, and I'll switch gear and introduce you to our new exciting RNA-ish assay to detect small RNAs. I'll be sharing some data to demonstrate the new assay's performance, along with some applications data. Towards the end of the webinar, I'll summarize today's presentation and conclude with a Q&A section to address some of your questions live. To begin, ACD's core technology is the RNA scope technology. RNA scope is an ideal spatial analysis solution to interrogate complex tissues. It is a highly specific and sensitive method to detect RNA biomarkers in cells and tissue with morphological context at single cell resolution. The RNA scope technology consists of three parts. A unique target probe that ACD designs against a sequence of interest a signal amplification system that generates a high signal to noise ratio. And lastly, visualization of single RNA molecules as dots for quantitative analysis. The assay allows for the spatial mapping of mRNAs, long non-coding RNAs, splice variants, highly homologous sequences and point mutations in cells and intact tissues, all of which can be visualized with either fluorescent or chromogenic labels. In addition, the assay can be performed on a wide variety of sample types, including FFP tissues, fresh frozen or fixed frozen tissues, and culture cells. ACD's technology includes two unique assays to detect RNA and tissue contacts at single molecule sensitivity with single cell resolution. First, RNA scope is designed to detect to detect mRNAs or non-coding RNAs that are greater than 300 nucleotides in length. RNA scope probes are designed in about 20 ZZ probe pairs. On the other hand, the base scope assay is designed and specifically supports the detection of splice variants, short and highly homologous sequences, and point mutation applications. The base scope platform uses probes that are designed in one to three ZZ probe pairs. For both the RNA scope and base scope assays, the bottom of the Zs are designed to bind to target specific regions, while the top of the Zs are designed to bind to the respective assay amplification tree. The top and bottom of the Zs are linked by a spacer. In its entity, the double Z probe design for our assays allows for single molecule detection. Design a specific probe for your target of interest. ACD requests you to provide us with a session number information or the exact sequence of target. You could even indicate your region of interest for targeting with stop, uh, with start, and or stop positions. Our bio, bioinformatics scientists channel this information through the proprietary ACD alignment algorithm to select the optimal sequences to ensure target specificity and uniformity of oligohydrolization in the assay. Our algorithm evaluates the sequence composition of each oligo in the pool to ensure no cross hydrolization with non-target RNA under stringent RNA conditions. The highlight of the RNA scope technology is in our probe design strategy. We can design probes for virtually any species 
and have done so in over 200 species covering most applications highlighted on our website. The majority of our probes are designed in human and mouse. On our website, you'll be able to find the application areas to demonstrate how these probes are used in the most common applications. Um, they include infectious diseases, cancer, neuroscience, and gene therapy. We've also added support for signaling pathways such as WINT or JAXDAX and indicated probes that we have available within that pathway. This slide summarizes all the assays that are currently available from ACD. We have chromogenic singleplex brown or red assays, as well as duplex assays on both the manual and automated platforms. The multiplex fluorescent assays allow for detection of up to four targets simultaneously in a single tissue slide. The major difference between the two fluorescent assays is that the V2 assay uses TSA from Ecoya Biosciences for signal visualization, whereas the multiplex fluorescent assay is an all-in-one kit. The V2 fluorescent assay is also available on the Leica automation platform. For higher plexing, we have the Hyplex assay, which enables the detection of up to 12 targets simultaneously in a single tissue section. Currently, the Hyplex assay is available in the manual platform only. If your target of interest is shorter than 300 nucleotides and you're studying splice variance or port mutation, then the base scope assays will be the right choice for you. Currently, the base scope singleplex assay is available on all platforms, while the base scope duplex assay is available on the manual platform. As of date, we have over 26,000 target probes in our catalog. Custom probes can be designed against any target from any species in as little as two weeks. Next, expanding our product portfolio, not only do we have assays to detect mRNA, long non-coding RNAs, short target splice variants, and point mutations, but we'll be releasing a new assay in the summer to detect small RNAs, including antisense oligos, microRNAs, and small interfering RNAs. So what is this new assay? Before we go into the details of the new assay, we'll look at the significance of detecting small RNA species. Detection of small RNA species can have significant pathological relevance. Specific and sensitive detection of small RNA targets such as ASOs, microRNAs, and siRNAs can be very challenging. These unique probes that are designed against very specific short sequences on the target of interest. For example, ASO-mediated therapy is a new form of RNA interfering solution to inhibit target-specific um, genes. The detection of ASOs require highly sensitive technology to evaluate the specificity of ASO-mediated therapies and to study gene expression after the delivery of the ASO therapy. Next, microRNAs can influence not only a single gene, but entire cellular pathways or processes. So visual detection of microRNAs are important to examine subcellular localization and gene expression. Last but not least, siRNA is one of the most promising types of RNA-based therapeutic approaches to silence target RNA. As a result, the ability to validate siRNA delivery is important to assess the specificity and efficacy of the siRNA therapy to avoid any off-target effects. Attempts at detecting small RNAs have relied heavily on qPCR, small RNA sequencing, and microarray approaches. While these methods deliver bulk expression levels, they do not provide detailed spatial information for gene expression. Additionally, existing small RNA-ish technologies suffer from poor reproducibility and sensitivity, and they require extensive optimization therefore consuming a substantial quantities of specimen samples. This emphasizes 
the need for a technology that can reliably detect cell test specific small RNA species in a tissue while maintaining high detection sensitivity and specificity. To address customers' needs, we're delighted to share with you that ACD has developed a new RNA in situ hybridization assay to allow for the detection of small RNAs with spatial and morphological information at single cell resolution. This new assay will enable the detection of short RNA sequences, including ASOs, microRNAs, sRNAs, or any short RNA sequences that are 17 to 50 nucleotides in length. This new assay will be supporting popular applications such as cancer, infectious diseases, neuroscience, and biopharmaceutics. Additionally, this new assay leverages ACD's core amplification and probe design capabilities to enable the detection of RNA molecules at single cell resolution, while improving the detection of short target RNAs with ease of data analysis. To enable further insights into your research, this new assay is compatible with HIC, detecting small RNA and protein simultaneously on the same fly. On the left diagram, this is an illustration of the new assay with the target probe binding to the target specific binding site, and the target probe binds to a new amplification system to enable highly sensitive and specific detection of small RNA. Next, we'll focus on the new assay workflow. The new assay workflow is very similar to our RNA scope singleplex workflow for those of you who are familiar with our technology. First, the cells of tissue that are bound to a fly is permeabilized using ACD's ready-to-use pretreatment reagent. The new assay supports a variety of sample types, including FFPE, fresh frozen, fixed frozen, and culture cells. Then, the small RNA target probes are hybridized to the target RNA. Currently, the new assay allows for a single RNA target detection. The hybridization step is universal across all targets, meaning further probe optimization is not required. After probe hybridization, the target probes will be hybridized with ACD's modified branch signal amplification tree, consisting of amplifiers and labor probes to provide high sensitivity and specificity. After the colors have been developed, the small RNA molecule signals can be seen as red chromogen deposits using bright field microscopy. I'd also like to mention that the fast red chromogen can also fluoresce similar to the Atom 550 dye under a fluorescent microscope. The slides can then also be scanned for further qualitative or quantitative analysis. The entire single plus assay workflow can be done either manual manually or fully automated using the Leica system. Next, we'll focus on the applications of the new assay. Again, the new assay will enable the detection of small RNAs such as ASOs, microRNAs, cvRNAs, small hairpin RNAs, and siRNAs. It also supports the sequential ish IC detection of RNA and protein on the same tissue slide. Major research, research segments for this new assay include basic science with the applications of neuroscience, stem cells, and developmental biology. Next major, major research is infectious diseases in the study of inflammation and immune cell regulation. Following that, biopharma therapeutics is an important segment studying delivery chemistry, biodistribution, safety and toxicity, and drug stability. Last but not least, the new assay will support the study of a cancer and clinical research around tumor biology, immuno-oncology, and pathology. Overall, these applications require a highly sensitive and highly specific solution to study small RNA expression. And that is why, in the next few slides, I'll show you some of our new assay data to demonstrate the assay performance. First, I'll show you some data demonstrating assay specificity, with some of them validating published results. 
Here is a publication using Northern blot analysis to show microRNA 124 expression in different mouse organs. The analysis showed that microRNA 124 is predominantly expressed in the brain tissue, and it is also one of the most abundantly expressed microRNAs in the brain. Here is our internal data demonstrating robust assay performance across tissue with microRNA-124. In here, we observed high microRNA-124 detection in FFP normal adult mouse, rat, and human brain tissue. On the other hand, the mouse liver is a known negative tissue. Here showing no microRNA-124 detection. This data demonstrates our new assay specificity, as well as concordance with existing assays such as the northern blot analysis from the previous publication I just showed you. This slide is also data showing detection of microRNA-124, but in FFP mouse embryo tissue. As you can see here, microRNA-124 is detected predominantly in the mouse brain, but not in other tissues such as the lung, liver, and kidney demonstrating the specificity of the probe and further confirming northern, northern blot analysis. Additionally, we use the scramble probe to further demonstrate the specificity of our new assay. Here you can see that the scramble probe is very clean in the mouse embryo tissue with no background. Another example shown here is the detection of microRNA-140 in mouse embryo cartilage tissue. Existing publications indicate that this microRNA is specifically expressed in cartilage tissue. Our assay demonstrates that, indeed, microRNA-140 is detected specifically in mouse cartilage tissue, such as the digits, somites, and air. We also stain the same mouse cartilage tissues with our scramble probe to further demonstrate the specificity of the target probe. Again, as you can see, the scramble probe is very clean in the tissue. Next, we have data showing the detection of microRNA-122 in different species samples. microRNA-122 shown here is detected in high levels in liver samples from mouse, rat, and human. To show specificity of our assay, microRNA-122 is also stained in a negative control tissue, the mouse kidney. Here, showing no detection of the target in the negative tissue. Scramble probe also shows no background detected. The last slide to demonstrate our assay specificity is looking at the detection of microRNA-138 in mouse spring tissue. This specific microRNA is known to be expressed in Purkinje cells in the brain region, such as the cerebellum and hippocampus. What this data shows us is that a new assay offers highly specific detection of targets in specialized cells of the brain. Next, I'll show you a few slides to demonstrate sensitivity of our new assay. Here is an image showing the detection of outer nuclear layer specific microRNA-182 in FFPE mouse eye sample. As expected from published data, you can also see some negligible microRNA-182 detected in the inner nuclear layer of, of the eye, as well as the ganglion cell layer. This demonstrates that our new assay is capable of detecting microRNAs at different expression levels in subcellular types. Here is a publication showing the detection of microRNA-145 being selectively expressed in vascular smooth muscle cells using standard um, assays like QRT-PCR and northern blot analysis. Our internal data using the new assay validated published data with QRT-PCR and northern blot analysis. As you can see here, microRNA-145 is detected specifically in the vascular smooth muscle cells in mouse lung, intestine, and kidney samples.
Last but not least, visual detection of microRNAs can be very challenging sometimes due to their low level of expression. Our assay has successfully demonstrated the specific detection of lower expressors. Here are examples of some lower microRNA expressors with the detection of microRNA 124 in mouse kidney, microRNA 31 in mouse intestine, and one of the most popular microRNA family members, LET7A, in mouse lung using our new assay. In the next slide, I'll talk about our recommended assay control. The new assay to detect small RNAs will offer universal positive and negative control probes. Strong nuclear U6 signal is observed in a variety of tissues, including human and mouse tissues, HeLa, and 3T3, 3T3 cell pellets. A universal scramble probe is also recommended as an assay control to demonstrate the specificity of the assay across species and samples. Next, I'll show you some data using our new assay for the detection of ASOs and siRNAs. The detection of these small RNAs are important, as previously mentioned, for validating delivery chemistry, bowel distribution, safety and toxicity, short-term and long-term stability for your therapeutic solution. Here is an example of our customers using our new assay to validate their ASO-mediated therapy. The vehicle tissues are used as control samples, and treated tissues are where the ASO compound is delivered. As you can see here, the ASO target is detected in high levels and only in the ASO-treated mouse cardiac and quad muscle samples. The control vehicle samples show no detection of the ASO target. This data helped the customer to conclude that this was a successful delivery of their ASO therapy. In this next example, our customer has generated two different siRNA compounds to determine the best solution for their siRNA therapy. In the provided samples, we successfully detected siRNA number one target in the siRNA number one delivered sample and not in the saline negative control, nor the siRNA number two delivered sample. Using our new assay, the customer was able to study the biodistribution of the siRNA number one target delivered in the mouse liver tissue. Next, we'll focus on the new assay HHC compatibility Great way to help further characterize cellular gene expression is to combine ish with IHC on the same tissue to simultaneously detect RNA and protein. Because of the similar workflows between ish and IHC, including sample fixation, pretreatment, prohabitization, signal detection, and data analysis, ish and IHC are ideal to combine into one workflow in which our ish assay is performed first followed by the IHC assay. What we refer to sequential IHC here can be used to characterize cell type specific expression, to identify origin of secreted proteins, visualize cell surface markers with RNA of interest, visualize RNA binding proteins and their target RNA, and by cell regulation of gene expression. Here is an example of sequential ish IHC staining performed on human cervical cancer tissue. The myeloid specific microRNA 223 and T cell marker CD3 were detected on the same tissue section. Our new ish assay and IHC staining shows mutually exclusive localization of these two targets. Here's another example of sequential HHC staining performed on human ovarian cancer tissue. Again, showing the detection of myelin specific microRNA 223 and the T cell marker CD3 on the same tissue section. Again, this data showing mutually exclusive localization of the two targets. To 
summarize today's topic, our new RNA-ish assay is a robust RNA in-situ hybridization assay, enabling the detection of small RNAs in tissues with spatial and morphological context at single cell resolution. Key applications of our new assay include ASOs, microRNAs, siRNAs, and other short RNA sequences that are 17 to 50 nucleotides in length. The new assay will be a single-plex chromogenic fast-read assay that's compatible with the manual platform or the fully automated Leica platform. We understand that the challenges that many of us are facing during the pandemic, however, research must go on, and that's why our services teams are here to assist you with moving your research forward. Our pharma assay services are fully operational and could help you advance your research in the detection of ASO, microRNAs, and siRNAs if you would like to early access to our new assay. In fact, we have successfully completed multiple pharma assay services studies for our customers using the new assay to detect their small RNAs of interest. Here's an anonymous testimonial from one of the leading biopharma companies who completed their siRNA study through our pharma assay services team. This is what a read for our assay. They said they had a great experience using ATD's new RNA-ish assay in their compound screening efforts. The technique is incredibly specific and the results are very easy to understand. They also gave very high credit to our pharma assay services team. The official commercial release of this new product is scheduled for this summer around July. Please feel free to contact us with any questions you may have with the following contact information. To conclude the webinar, here are some frequently asked questions for you to take a moment to review. While you're reviewing these questions, I'll scan through some live chat questions from the chat box and provide some responses to them um, to the broader audience. For those of you who are exiting the webinar, we thank you for joining the webinar today, and I hope you're excited about our upcoming new products.